Good morning, fellow illuminators. Good afternoon, rather, and good evening and good night to wherever you might be. Now, um, today we are going to be looking at a very important topic, the militarization of the Caribbean and Latin America. Now, there has been quite some talk, I, even though I don't think that is getting the light of day that it should be receiving, but today I will try as best as possible to highlight some very important arguments, some compelling arguments, I should say, that is coming from an article that I pulled up um, last week, some time ago. Now, I will be sharing with you some of the thoughts that the author has definitely highlighted, because it's very important for people within the Caribbean region and also the United States to understand what is happening in the world. Last week, we were bombarded, as it were, with the presidential debates, the U.S. presidential debates, um, Joe Biden against Donald Trump, right? I never, although in, the, in my wildest thought, you know, believed that the United States would have presented both men, having had the sort of controversy that we saw in previous times on January 6th and prior to that, that these men um, actually created, manufactured, in the United States, but we're living in a world of drama and conflicts and lots of which are manufactured, engineered, and to create chaos so that the reigning elites and the reigning powers that be might be able to achieve, right, and to craft their agenda as it were, to suit themselves and not to suit the public by any stretch of the imagination. Hope that you are not being fooled and you saw the narcissism displayed by both men Right, because Donald Trump is not the only narcissist that they say exists. All right, the, the, these presidents sit atop a very powerful military complex of military apparatus. And if you noticed that when Trump said that the United States is not respected as a country, um, it's no longer respected on the international scene, that Joe Biden was quick in his defense by refuting what. Donald Trump had suggested by saying to him, yes, we are respected because of our military might, right? He alluded to the fact that America is strong militarily. He's not talking about the, the economics, right? The cultural influence and how much the United States has decayed in those areas. He, is, he only referenced America's military might, but all countries fair America, they have to respect. But there is a difference between respecting nations and fearing them. And many countries fear the United States, they do not respect the United States. And that is what we have to understand. You can't force people to respect you, to command respect from people. But the United States is using its military apparatus, right, and its military might to um, induce fear in nations, right? So Americans need to understand that, that there's a difference, but people no longer respect. And what we saw that during that disastrous presidential debate, how can people really respect America, right? The respect would have been lost, right? By two men who were not saying anything, um, but just declaring how powerful they are and talking about some infantile stuff. Right, who is the greatest and who is the best and who's who was able to keep inflation rate to a minimum or at a minimum, and all of the nonsense that they spoke about, not addressing the root causes of the problems that the devil and plague the American society. But Americans love uh entertainment and they too are, you know, vouching for petition politics. So they are going to be saying who won the debates. And I would say none of them won the debate or perhaps they won, both, of, both men won the debate and the American people lost the debate because they were not debating about them. They were debating about themselves, right? And that is where the narcissism came out in full display. And talk about lies. Trump is not the only liar, all right? We just about everything that came from Joseph Biden's mouth, you know, were also lies. And the fact that the media kept on lying about his cognitive decline, that is something that is another story to talk about. The fact that Joe Biden is experiencing 
cognitive rapid rapid cognitive decline and the fact that the media houses keep on telling the people no that's not true and there are individuals people with whom i've spoken who suggest that he's not this is misinformation it's disinformation now how can you have an objective fact that is disinformation or misinformation if i'm seeing the thing with my own eyes not only once but on many occasions I would perhaps say that it's misinformation if we had only seen it once, if he had blundered once. But this has been an ongoing issue, even prior to his presidency. But it has, you know, um, rapidly, um, you know, we saw this rapid de decline, his rapid decline in his cognitive dexterity and abilities during his presidency, just the first time. And he has been walking and he's falling. He's not able to have a balance. He seems to be always frozen. And he seems to be stomping a lot over his speech, right? This is nothing new, but because, you know, he had no notes on which to uh, rely, then he was able to, you know, to display that cognitive decline during the presidential debates. But that is not what my video is about. So let's go into the crux of the matter because that's very important that we get into the discussion points at this moment. For those of you who have not yet, um, let me see if I can get this here. Well, that's not it. Right, this is coming from Presenza. Let me see if I can make it bigger, the font size bigger so that I can, you can see and you can follow what I'm reading, right? Very important that you understand. And you. Now, this is coming from Presenza, right? And this is, seems to be an Italian publication in, in New York. Um, it's the International Press Agency, right? And here we have different languages. It's published in different languages. But the title of the article here is U.S. Military Projection in Latin America and the Caribbean Intensifies. And this was written on, I think, on the um, recently, right? It was written in, in recent times. <laughs> Let's see that. Is it on the 24th of, of, of uh, January? Now, and it was presents in New York, so it was published in New York, I assume. And the author's name is Roger D. Harris. And this is very important. This is what he's saying here. Upon assuming the U.S. presidency, Joseph Biden, or Joe Biden, asserted in his first major foreign policy address, America is back, right? And we all saw that when, you know, the news media were shouting, screaming that America is back. In reference, they were suggesting that democracy is back because under Trump, all we had was authoritarianism, which was utter nonsense, but that is what they were indicating. For Latin America and the Caribbean, this has meant an aggressive expansion of the US military in the region, right? So that is what's about an aggressive expansion of U.S. military in the region. And that is what we have to understand. Washington is back because it's back with its military industrial complex. And it realizes that the Caribbean region and Latin American region also have, you know, that these the region has been, you know, occupied by other foreign interests and powers, something that you have to understand. From Santo Domingo to Kingston to, um, Bogota, right? All you know, we see the influence of Chinese uh, and also, you know, Russian influence in some cases, right? And the United States wants to solidify its dominance, right? Its full spectrum dominance in the region. Now, let's get into what the author has to say. In just the last year, U.S. Marines and Special Forces landed in Peru in May 2023, brought in by the unelected right-wing government to address internal unrest, right? So it's always an unrest. The United States always intervenes when there is an unrest. But the question is, who caused the unrest or has the United States created the pretext for unrest? In October, the U.S. got the UN Security Council to approve the military occupation of Haiti using proxy troops from Kenya. Also in October, the right-wing government of Ecuador resorted to deploying US troops to deal with their domestic insecurities. 
So we see there that the United States is spreading its tentacles around the region. This month, Mexico and Peru joined the annual U.S. naval exercises in mock war against China. Right, so we can see that, and we can see that the warships, right, the Russian warships that went to Cuba, even though we are told that Cuba is suggesting that that is normally done, that you know they have these mock testings and so forth with nations that um with whom they are or with which they are allies. Um, and that just scratches the surface of U.S. military engagement in the region. So it just scratches the surface, something that we have to understand. So militarizing diplomacy. And if you read the book um, about the empire uh, the, of the United States by Charles Johnson, he did say that, and from a long time ago, that the U.S. State Department is militarized and has been militarized for decades, right? So it's not, this is not new. There's something that has been ongoing, but lots of citizens are not following, are not abreast of what is happening around the world. The Pentagon, along with the National Security Council and even the CIA have taken on an increasingly pronounced role in diplomatic relations, formerly the purview of the state. And that is why we say that the Security Council, the National Security Council in the United States, the NSA controls the government. And sometimes I do wonder when we see people like the likes of Joseph Biden, who is suffering from cognitive decline, you know, if is the United States suggesting to the U.S. population and the world at large that these people, these puppets called the presidents of the United States are not the ones who are in charge, but behind the scenes, the powers that be control them. So it doesn't necessarily mean, or it's not important, I should say, that they have cognitive, you know, um, acuity, right? That they that they are able, they have that sort of mental consciousness that they need to have to function within that role because they don't run the show, right? And people are saying Obama, Obama is the one running the show, but no, Obama is also a puppet, so he's controlled by the also and. SA, but he's the person that we're seeing. So that's why people are seeing automatically because Joseph Biden is not doing well mentally. It means, therefore, that Barack Obama is running the show. But Obama doesn't have that power to run the show, right? He's just being used also as a bare puppet. Something you have to understand. Now, we have former CIA agent and current U.S. ambassador to Peru, Lisa Kenner, for instance, was implicated in the overthrow of the elected leftist president there a year Goal, right? So this is what happens. And there is a sort of transition from being in State Department to the CIA and back, right? So that is something that we have to uh, understand. The drift in diplomatic uh, function to the military became more pronounced with the appointment of Law Richardson as head of the U.S. Sovereign Command in October 2021. When asked about her interest in the region, she unapologetically admitted that the U.S. seeks hegemony over the region and the possession of its rich resources. May I repeat, right? I'm going to repeat that because you've got to digest what is happening. When asked about her interest in the region, she unapologetically admitted that the U.S. seeks hegemony over the region and possession of its rich resources. So hegemony, for those of you who don't know that word, right, means dominance, right? Full spectrum dominance in the region. And they are also going to snatch the rich resources of the region. So don't be fooled when you see people in the likes of Jamaica and Guyana, and they're searching for gold and not for, yes, for gold and also for oil resources. They're not there these resources are not going to be used for the upliftment of the populace. I repeat, these resources are not going to be used for the upliftment of the populace. It's more to enrich the elites and also the people who are doing it, the U.S. and their proxies. Now, something that you have to understand, and it's very difficult to understand, yes, the people might eat, get some of the crumbs, but that is not sufficient to build the nation, as it were. 
So in January 2022, General Richardson signed a bilateral agreement with Honduras. She met with Brazilian and Colombian military brass last May. Previously, she had visited Argentina, Chile, Guyana, and Suriname. From August to September 2022, U.S. Colombian U.S. and Colombian militaries conducted joint NATO exercises while Richardson made a five-day visit to meet with the newly elected Colombian president. This week, she's meeting with the president of Ecuador, who declared his country is under a state of internal armed conflict. Remember now we talked about the Global Fragility Act and the fact that the United States can use that pretext if a country, if it deems a country to be under internal armed conflict or to be experiencing some sort of, you know, national security problems, then it can intervene, right? But it's not intervening to secure the country and to help a country to get its act together. It's intervening so that it can what? Control that country and its natural resources something that you've got to understand. And I wonder, oftentimes I repeat it, but I don't think many people are understanding. So we have status of U.S. military forces in the region. Washington is by far the largest source of military aid, supplies, and training in the region. Right? So even though you talk about China, and China is whatever, and China is in, in competition with the United States, China, the Chinese are not going to be able to overcome the United States militarily, right? We understand that the United States invests more in its military than all the nations, all the industrialized nations of the world combined. Let me repeat that. The U.S., and this has been going on for years, from ever since I've begun reading things like these, I've begun delving to things, these matters from 2005, 2006, Right, so I've been doing this for quite some time. Doing this for quite some time. And I have always, all the books that I have read about the US military, this is a known fact that is always stated that the United States invests more in its military than all the industrialized nations combined. So that's a lot of money that it, 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 it invests. In its military. And that is why Americans are even saying when they go abroad to places like Colombia, to other countries like China and up, they see where the infrastructure in these countries are more modern. While the United States infrastructure there is collapsing because the United States is not actually investing in its human resources nor its physical infrastructure, something that you've got to understand. Now, the U.S. has 12 military bases, each in Panama and Puerto Rico, nine in Colombia, right, eight in Peru, three in Honduras, and two in Paraguay, along with military installments or installations in Aruba, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Cuba, that's in Guantanamo, and Peru. And I think they also have a military installation in the South. Now, it doesn't mean, therefore, that th these are what we know about, right? But there might be other installations about which we are unaware, right? Something that you have to understand. In total, the U.S. has 76 bases in the region as of 2018. That's a lot plus numerous unconfirmed operational bases, right? So some of the bases are unconfirmed, right? We have no knowledge about them. All function as military centers as well as cyber warfare posts. Among the problems associated with these bases are displacement of resources that otherwise would be used for social problems. Or programs, I should say, not problems, but programs. These installations are notorious for their lack of transparency and accountability. In addition, they cause ecological damage with little or no provisions for environmental cleanup. So much about environment, the environment and what US is doing to protect the environment. And I heard the question that was posed to Trump and Biden during the presidential debates. And Trump was, you know, quite proud. He didn't want to answer the question. He refused to answer it. So he went and he picked on something that had nothing to do with the question. Um, he was forced to answer it eventually, you know, which he said that, which I believe, 
I'm sorry, that we have been using other sources of energy from, you know, time immemorial. And it doesn't mean that our environment was being decayed. What is decaying our environment? They're not saying are these wars, right? And these military undertakings, secret, whatever. And we also have other things that they're doing, the scientists are doing that I shall not say, right? That are affecting the environment, right? So they're not concerned about the well-being of the physical environment. It's more of control, right? The more money you give to them, uh, in the hopes that they are protecting the environment, they're developing strategies to, to do the same, then it's the more money that they will use to control the population, the global, both the indigenous population and also the global population. Something that we've got to understand, we've got to really digest. Many of you are not digesting it because you believe every word that you hear from the media, right? And you do not know, you do not understand that the media is corporate controlled. It's a corporate entity. So they tell you what you want to hear, right? And some people, a lot of people are happy to hear what they want to hear, that they will just cry disinformation or misinformation, you know, when people who are speaking the truth, you know, divulge the truth to them. They can't understand it because their minds are so cluttered with what they want to hear. And one of the things that is so very difficult to do is to declutter the mind of filth, rubbish, and lies and disease. It's very difficult to do. It can be done, but it requires, a lot. first of all, it requires humility. And, you know, human beings, including myself, we do not like to admit that we are wrong, right? And that, you know, especially if we think that the persons to whom we got, from whom we got the information are persons who are deemed to be credible and they're brilliant and they graduated from some of the most eminent universities around the world, right? They have got to be right. They have PhDs and they have acquired and they have built up a career for so many years. How could they have been wrong, right? And when we accept that and we realize that sometimes they're wrong, right, then we it's very difficult to say, well, you know, I was wrong. I shouldn't have followed them. How could they have deceived me, right? But remember now that the person who is behind them really is the prince of this world, who the, who the Bible, or which the Bible has described as the father of lies. Now, let's go back to understand what the guy here is saying, because it's crucial for us to understand what's going on with the militarization of the Caribbean. Very, very important that you understand that. The U.S. also has in addition to bases, major military operations in Argentina, Ecuador, Uruguay, Guatemala, Bolivia, and Mexico. Colombia is a global NATO partner, and Brazil is an extra NATO preferential ally. Right. So whatever is happening in Colombia and these countries and in Brazil, whether they be right wing government or left wing government, the U.S. runs the show. Right. So now we have Lula da Silva and a lot of people on the American left, you know, were pro Lula da Silva, thinking that he's going to change the political fabric of, of, uh, of Brazil, that he's just going to do what he's told to do. Right. And that's what you have to understand. The state partnership program of the U.S. National Guard joins 18 states, Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia, in active partnerships with militaries in 24 regional countries. U.S. citizens, particularly those on the political right, like to say America first, right? And yeah, America first when America was founded, right? But you have to understand that after in the independence of the United States, that decided that it was going to go the route of internationalism. Right? Because as the Bible suggested, it was an image that was created to the beast. It was just like the beast, no way in different in shape or form. Right? It is a beast power, image of the beast, and the beast that was before it was Rome. And in fact, it was um what's his name? Bush, right? President Bush, George W. Bush, 
Cephas Jr., who said that America, after that, after 9-11, he declared explicitly America to be a new Rome, right? And that is a biblical prophecy coming to bear, right? It came, it came you know, truthfully, <laughs> right? It came, um, that prophecy was true, that America was eventually and is indeed an image to the beast that was before it, which, you know, Protestants all knew was Rome, the Roman Catholic papacy, right? And that's what the United States is doing now, building again, as it were, and creating, as it were, a new dark ages, right? A new dark age, as it were, something that we have to understand. So the U.S. is on the is its quest for full spectrum dominance and full spectrum dominance in the region as we speak, right? Full spectrum dominance. Why is my my mouse here the problem? Full spectrum dominance in the region, right? Let us continue with a little before we end the discussion. It's very important that you understand what's going on in the world and in the region. Now, we have here the U.S., sorry, not the U.S., but thus U.S. regional military strategy has pivoted from fighting communism, terrorism, and drugs to containing China and to a lesser extent Russia and even Iran. Let me read this again. U.S. regional military strategy has pivoted from fighting communism, so that was the pretext that they have to intervene, right, because they're in their fight against communism. Then they moved to terrorism after 9-11 and drugs, right, containing China and to a lesser extent, Russia and even Iran. Notice in 2010, that was the time that they invaded Jamaica, right, under the pretext that they had to get a drug kingpin. And they had other agendas within that agenda because that was just a pretext. China is now the leading trading partner with South America and the second largest with the region as a whole after the U.S. Some 21 or 31 regional countries have joined China's Belt and Road Initiative. The Southern Command's budget, which had declared, declined in the 2020s, rather, is now ballooning as the U.S. gears up to confront China. The sunshine is coming in on me right now. So let me see if I could get it out of my face. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So we have the Latin America theater is pitched by the Southern Command as a nearby test bed and a prime location for experimenting with and testing new technologies to be used particularly against China. Right. So the United States is preparing itself for a war with China in the region. Well, and don't be surprised at the warships that arrived from Russia to Cuba, right? Because it's all in preparation for this big showdown. General Richardson warns that China is a communist country that's spreading its tentacles across the globe so far away from its homeland, right? That's what we have to understand. So we see where the United States is building its argument. And the argument, if you don't understand the truth, is compelling, right? First, they wanted to fight against communism during the Cold War. Then it may it moved now to the fight against terrorism after 9-11, right? And it's compelling because who wants terrorism? Who wants terrorists to be in their region to kill them? Particularly after what happened after 9-11, or on 9-11, I should say, right? You don't want that. So it sounds good at surface level. But when you dig deeper into the historical events, right, and what is happening in current affairs, you'll understand that it is not the intended purposes of the U.S. They have other agendas to control and to have full spectrum dominance, right? That is what the United States is about, is about full spectrum dominance. And I have been saying this on this channel for a long time. I hope that you are understanding and I am not even scratching the surface 
You've got to do your own research. You've got to read books. You've got to analyze. You've got to get out of this sort of brainwashing and mental indoctrination. And thinking, in you know, you think that the U.S. is on a quest to free the world and to bring the world to institute freedom and democracy. Right? That is what you think. And you as citizens, you think that you're safe because the United States is going to protect you. I have news for you. Right? I have news for you. And the news is not good news. Right? So you too have to educate yourself about the empire, right? The mouth of which you live in. Right? We live in the belly of the beast. And you've got to understand that and stop being childish and thinking that this is just about Haiti or this is just about Colombia or it's just about Bolivia or it's just about Venezuela. It's about you. You and I are the enemies. Those of us who like freedom, right, and who want to live in a free world, we are the enemies. And you've just got to understand that. It's difficult to understand because we elect our governments to protect us. But in many cases, they are not. And yesterday, Curtis Ward, Ambassador Cur Curtis Ward, uh, an ambassador of Jamaica, wrote a very strident article against government and crime and balance there, and he's, in which he suggested that even some of our security forces know the criminals, and yet still, they pretend as if they do not know. Right, and they go to funerals, and they they are there while people are mourning the death of their loved one, and they feel nothing, nothing. They are bereft of any sense of compassion and sympathy, even though they know the criminals that really perpetrated the act of criminality. They know, but they pretend not to know, and then they'll tell you we are going after them, and we know. In fact, they say we know who they are but they're not willing to bring them to justice, right? They're not willing to bring them to justice because it's a business and they too have to do whatever they're commanded to do because the U.S. is the boss here, right? And the U.S. is not an innocent culture as many people would like to think, right? Just read the pages of its history. Thank God for it, that it, God, through his angels, have been able to hold back the winds of strife, but it is an image to the beast. It's a mirror image of the Roman Empire. And people have not yet got that. They're just looking for a future U.S. to speak like a dragon. But the very first day it was speaking like a dragon, it just will increment as the time goes by. And it will be definitely compounded by the time of the end. Right? But this is, it's it, it pretends to be innocent, but it is not. It pretends to have the symbol to, to, to be like Christ, but it is not Christ-like. It is demonic. It's a demonic force that controls it, that looks like a lamb. And that is why so many Americans and other people of the world are, have this false sense of security once you say the U.S. is coming to the region, a lot of people let their guard down. Yeah, because, you know, the U.S. is going to defend us. Right? That is the sort of naivete that we have in the United States and the region. Let me go. The sun is coming up and I have to get out of this thing before I am already impacted by it. You know, the bright rays of the sun is shining in through my windows. So the U.S. also fomented numerous unsuccessful coups, attempts against Venezuela, most notably in 2002, but continuing to the present. And then we have here Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro reveal that four assassination plots were made against him and other high-ranking officials in 2003. The CIA and the DEA were accused. The U.S. has posted a 15 million bounty on Maduro's head, 
Nicaragua too has been targeted, including a major coup attempt in 2018. Cuba as well has noted a recent uptick of U.S. terror attacks. So these are things that are that the region, uh, countries in the region, are facing, and something that we've got to come to grips with, right? Um, now we have hybrid warfare. In addition to the explicit military exercise described above, the U.S. has increasingly employed hybrid warfare to try to maintain its dominance in an emerging multipolar geopolitical context. And there's no multipolar world as the U.S. left-wing media like to suggest. It. That's nonsense, right? It's a unipolar world that we live in, right? Unilateral coercive economic measures are now imposed uh, on over a quarter of humanity, also known as sanctions. These tactics can be just as deadly as bombs, right? So when they impose sanctions on you, they can be, you know, much more effective, right? Um, than And deadly as bombs can be. Because if, you know, they starve you to death, then that's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Look at this, what it's saying here. Sanctions on Venezuela started by Obama, right? The black president intensified by Trump and seamlessly continued by Biden. So there is a continuity of government, right? There is not this difference between Trump and Biden. That's nonsense. That's for the people who do not have brains, right? And many of us don't have brains, sadly to say. So that is why people will be watching the debates and think that they're going to hear something new and that, you know, these men are different, that they differ, they're a different style. Right, but it's just the same agenda. They might have some, yeah, uh, differences in style, but the agenda is the same. Right, something that we've got to understand. So you know, we have that have taken their poll over one hundred thousand deaths. Only two percent of children under five started, and over three hundred thousand chronic disease patients without access to treatment. You know, this happened in Iraq also under. President Bill Clinton, where over, you know, a million children were impacted or, or citizens by the sanctions that they had imposed on Iraq prior to 2020, uh, 2001, right? So this has been ongoing. Despite the UN nearly unanimous condemning the US blockade of Cuba for its devastating effects on its civilians, and as a violation of the UN Charter, Ever tightening economic warfare has left to the island in crisis. Washington is also escalating the hybrid war against Nicaragua. Right, so the war continues. The war drums continue. Right, and there's nothing that we can do. The U.S. Southern Command announced joint air operations with Guyana. So we have because of what is happening between Venezuela and the it is the Esquibo. Um, land with the, the fight there between Guyana and Venezuela. And a lot of times these things are, they don't just happen, you know, out of thin air, right? They happen because the United States provoked these wars. And then when these wars are provoked, then they can intervene and then they can accomplish what they want. So let's just, let's just look here. With the new presidency of devotedly pro Yankee now in, in Argentina a month ago, the U.S. is again pushing to install new military bases in the strategic uh, triple border region of Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil. So the Wall Street Journal reports Millet has maintained strong support since taking office, as Argentines so far embrace austerity measures. Emphasis added. So the Wall Street Journal is referring to the financially secure elites who are not among the 40% below the poverty line in Argentina. The trade unions mounted a general strike on January 24. He's wrapping up here right now, which is a very good um, conclusion. In conclusion, the enduring extraterritorial protection of Yankee military power has always been for the purpose of controlling its southern neighbors, right? It's not to protect you. Right, and to grow your economy and all that nonsense. So the U.S. foreign investments to so grow your economy and the IMF and the World Bank go there and they pretend as if they are trying to lower the debt. That is not true. That is not true. And I have been preaching that since I have really 
created this channel and there are people who think that I'm talking nonsense because they do not read. Their minds are so indoctrinated, their minds are so cluttered with untruths that they cannot think for themselves, but has become more sophisticated and pervasive. Right? So the United States is very sophisticated in its strategies, in its tactics that it uses, that you have to be people who think and who read, who have wisdom and understanding. In this 201st year of the Monroe Doctrines, Simon Bolivar's words are ever more prescient. The United States appears to be destined by providence to plague America with misery in the name of freedom. Right? That is what it's doing. It's plaguing the Americas. And when we say the Americas, we're talking about the Caribbean and Latin America. Right? So it's plaguing the region with misery in the name of freedom. Freedom and democracy. Right? Freedom and democracy. These are the two buzzwords in the Caribbean. And people are fooled by these words. A large swath of humanity believe it is true. And they believe every word that the IMF and the World Bank, by the way, institutions of the U.S. and the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. military industrial complex tell them to do. Because if countries don't do what the IMF, you know, um, enjoins upon them to do, then the military will be sent. Right? And hell will be let loose on these countries. Because that is how the United States operates today. And that is why it's United, the U.S. State Department has been militarized because it's no longer diplomacy, but the display, right? The flagrant, the egregious display of militarism, military might, right? You do what I tell you to do. And it's time for the people in the region, this region in Latin America and the Caribbean to grow up. And it's time for our educators to, to educate our young minds, to think and to think intelligently and to think outside of the box. There's just too much nonsense and textbook learning coming from the way in which people reason and they argue based on what they've learned in schools, what they've learned in a textbook. But there's so much happening in the world that does that, you know, do not come from a mere textbook, reading of a mere textbook, or even the, the reading of a mere scholarly book. Right? It comes with people from you know the minds of people who are working on the ground who are and who are also dedicated to a sense of the truth, to rendering a sense of the truth. Because many of our scholars in universities are not rendering the truth. They're just there to publish what they're told to publish because even academia is controlled by the US military industrial complex. All right? It is. And everywhere you go now in academia, people are saying the same things, that they're robots within that system. And they are able to think. They're unable to think. And some of them can think, but they suppress their ability to think because they want to be hoisted. They want to be promoted. They want to secure their academic titles and their academic positions something that you've got to understand. But it's a farce, right? The entire system that we see here is farcical, right? And it's something that you've got to understand, right? I hope that you are observing. I hope that you're looking. I hope that you're engaging, you know, with things that are true even though they might be uncomfortable to accept. I hope that you are surrounding yourself yourselves with like minds, right? Don't allow people who have nothing to say to distract you and distract your attention because you're going to waste time, right? You want people, I'm not saying now that if people want to learn and they don't have like minds, but people who want to learn, not people who are not willing to listen and to think you can't surround yourselves with this. You're, you're wasting your time and you're wasting theirs too. 
right? If they don't want to learn. It's time for us now to get our hands together. The U.S. is on a quest for full spectrum governance. Thank you so much for joining. I hope to see you in another video when I shall upload another. Please be sure to like and to subscribe. Like the videos so the videos can be shared with as many people on the platform that we can grow our community. Remember now, knowledge is power. Ciao.